honored to have with us today four distinguished panelists all of them senior leaders in the field of open distance education with several years of experience all of them are actively involved during the current covid-19 crisis to spread education far and wide continuing their usual sphere of work beyond the call of duty professor tikant mahapatra is vice chancellor odisha states open university in india welcome professor mahapatra professor vayunandan is vice chancellor of yashwant rao chavan maharashtra open university in india welcome professor namaskar my colleague dr davi porter you are from vancouver uh in the commonwealth of learning is senior advisor of higher education hugely involved in education technology development around the world welcome david last but not the least my colleague professor madhu parhar with whom i worked several years at indira gandhi open university now she is director of the commonwealth of learning's regional center at commonwealth educational media center for asia in new delhi with all my four panelists i welcome you all the participants from around the world to this session and we will be engaged in a process of discussion with our panelists to understand how they visualize leading during crisis what they have done and what more needs to be done to make open and distance learning mainstream and support governments and learners um in future as well starting with professor uh, mahapatra um and followed by dr bayanandan professor parhar and dr porter uh a ice breaking question introducing your context um what are some of the key issues that you saw during the covid-19 pandemic professor mahapatra you are muted thank you very much sanjay uh, let me thank the co panelists and the distinguished uh, participants and uh, wish them all the very best good health and uh, safe stay with the family now when we come to the actions by open universities and particularly my university during the pandemic i would say that uh, the lockdown in india started uh, from uh, say third week of march and the biggest challenge that uh, we faced was how to establish contacts with the stakeholders of the university the stakeholders are the uh, learners vast group of learners located at uh, both urban and rural areas in the state of orissa our study centers our counselors our faculty members and things of that sort so what we did is the first challenge that we confronted was to establish a contact and we took the initiative of using the technology which is open source technology available free uh, and uh, we could succeed in establishing contacts with the learners directly by interacting with them i being the vice chancellor of the university straight away contacted the students and invited them in large groups for interaction first to resume the contact and second we established a, not only a contact we wanted to keep them engaged during the period of the uh, pandemic so how to keep them engaged we invited the best teachers available in the country in diverse fields 
and asked them to deliver lectures and invited the students and the counselors to participate and when we succeeded in both these attempts finally we thought that why not immediately resume the counseling which was supposed to held at the study centers and use the technology extensively of course the open source platforms like uh, google meet open source platform like zoom meet which were available till 30th of september free webinars were conducted and counseling were resumed and uh, these three phases i think were the biggest challenge first is establishing contact second is engaging the learners and the stakeholders and finally resuming the uh, counseling and other learner support activities particularly redressal of the grievances of the students so in a nutshell i would say that this pandemic has really opened up the eyes and ears of the distance education leadership in the country and particularly in uh, case of me uh, because technology used extensively for various activities could be possible uh, because of this pandemic so for regular universities it continued to be a challenge even today but for open universities i think that it created an opportunity for adopting the appropriate kind of technology for them uh, the access to technology was a challenge but for us access to appropriate kind of technology and engaging with the student in the teaching learning process including grievance redressal was the challenge and i always feel that we are two steps ahead of the regular universities during the period of the pandemic not only for me but for other open universities in india thank you professor vainandan your introductory remark on the challenges yeah uh, thank you sanjay i think uh, uh, good evening good morning and uh, to all the participants from uh, uh, different parts of the world uh, yeah covid 19 really i think it's a challenge i think uh, world over not only in our country every and especially in education and they are and coming to our open university yes yashwantrao chavan maharashtra open university fortunately right from the beginning we have been uh, integrated with the technology so that was one thing which we always uh, feel uh, proud in the uh, maharashtra so coming to the situations uh, covid situation as rightly said by our honorable prime minister create this crisis into opportunities i think it was in the may as rightly said by uh, sri kanji that lockdown was declared and we are supposed to conduct our uh, the term and exams in the month of may so by that time our counseling should have been completed by april march april so we thought how to i mean uh, fill that gap which was because of the uh, lockdown so we started on an ex pilot basis from mumbai regional center on zoom counseling so it went so well and uh, participants our i mean really the response was so high because you all know that in open universities counseling is not a mandatory for humanities and social sciences so hardly you have 20 to 30% students attending the counseling at the study centers but to our surprise we saw about 70% of students were engaged in this zoom counseling when we started from mumbai then we spread to all our eight regional centers in one and a half year we have i mean one way we have i mean uh, organized 9000 counseling sessions i think it is a record in india no university i think had this kind of we have conducted 9000 so that is what the this has given a lot of opportunity to connect ourselves with the students which was not really the case uh, as a regular, uh, as normal case so all students were engaged because of the uh, lockdown they were they are looking the, this as in some engagement and that way not only counseling sessions they were also asking about their futures careers their problems so it brought everything i mean which was a very different i mean it's very difficult for a student to uh, get all this information so that way the students were completely engaged and that is how i think these counseling sessions were then the coming to the other important part is we have a fm radio which we broadcast for 20 or 4 hours specifying what are the courses what i mean programs it covers and equally we have uh, audio video cassettes which also been put on the website and 
and properly given them what program and what uh, i mean audio is available and what video is available and apart from that we i mean we have a pdf form of our all our print media on our websites so that also made help them i mean somehow what we thought was the response was over helling unlike earlier in normal course they were not that they were hardly in the starting of the examination there used to be uh, some serious but this lockdown period has connected all students because in maharashtra most of our students are from rural area 70% so they were all connected and they were very happy first for the first time they saw their counselors i mean in the sense they no, no doubt uh, many of them don't go to the counseling session you all know that it's not mandatory but now they came to know who are their counselors and what subjects and they also had a de de detailed discussions and that is how we went on the other very important is i think uh, what we understand is i think uh, as rightly said sri kan open university has an advantage compared to the regular and conventional universities we are already technologically integrated so this was a i mean we we have did not really face that problems like conventional because conventional university they have a face to face so this is what i think apart from that the examination which i will tell you later i think this is how i think it is really and we because of this covid we have developed our learning management system now we have decided that we have centralized counseling for of uh, i mean important areas of the each program from the nasik so that uh, everyone have a uniform aspects in related to their programs so this is how i think we there were challenges but it has given us opportunity to be more i mean what you call innovative and take initiative so this is our thank you thank you very much professor parar uh thank you dr sanjay all my co panelists dr shrikant professor vayunandan and uh, dr david and all the colleagues who are attending this uh, webinar at this moment so first of all um i must say the question which um, dr sanjay has put it up was also uh, in the video we just saw by the icd president um crisis is prolonging this covid crisis is prolonging we all know and its impact is going to be long lasting every time we we see that uh, it is over and the surge comes once again so now what are the key challenges in education especially what we are facing i will uh, talk maybe a little broader the first and the foremost challenge as the world bank reports unicef unesco all reports they say there is a disruption of education and it has affected almost 1.6 billion learners in more, more than 190 countries in all the continents so first of the most important challenge which i see in india and of course in the region the asian region where we are working semka is working is the accessibility oh. concerns so the accessibility concerns each of us we know i don't want to get into the detail of it the accessibility concern is to a the internet co connection which people they are facing in the rural areas and the interiors of our country india and the second uh, challenge which is the accessibility is the device so all of us we know if we read in the media that of course um, the main cities of the country whether we can say bangladesh or sri lanka or india people they have the devices but in the rural area um not uh, don't talk about the laptop but even the mobiles are not available with the with the families if the mobile is there there is just just one mobile so that's one um one challenge which i think it it has shown us the second challenge which is very important is of the cyber security because everything is on the on or through internet now so the the challenge which i am sure all the open universities are facing will face all of course and the formal system is how to secure their lms um the learning management system uh, shrikan dr shrikan has that management system how how he will protect not only he the open universities at large and the education system at large how they are going to protect it privacy concerns are also there how to keep your data secured that's very very important point data leakage will be there uh, 
I don't know how much we have put our thoughts into it. That's another very important issue. The next important point, which we were, I was just reading today itself only, that due to this economic crisis, which COVID has created, um, there is a, a more than 60% chance that there is going to be a lot of um, dropouts, especially if we talk about the school education, the children they are going to drop out, it will going to have a child labor issues and um, child marriages. And there is literature, there are studies now and which are coming in the newspapers. That's going to be a major, major issue which we will talk about. Uh, a positive side of it, and with that, I will end this, uh, this question. The positive side is that e-learning was also there before. It, it's not that we were not aware of it, but there is a social willingness to accept the technology. So that's a brighter side of it. And the last, again, uh, a challenge, uh, which may be the key issue which we need to think about is uh, the learning crisis this COVID-19 is, is going to create air it has already created. And if we talk about the, um, the school education in higher education, maybe I am not still so much aware of it, but in school crisis, like all of the Indian colleagues, we, they know we, the, the major organization that is National Council of Education Research and Training, NCRT, which caters to school education, they come out with the National uh, Achievement Survey Already, the, when in the formal system, it says that more than 50% of the students in grade five cannot read uh, a grade two textbook. So just imagine with this not going to the school in a formal system, how this learning crisis is going to come. And that's, I think it is true with the higher education. With this, I think these are the few issues we need to think about that what are the issues uh, there. Thank you. Dr. Porter, uh, your Initial remarks, please. Thanks very Sanjaya. much, uh, Sanjaya and colleagues. Um, <clears throat> before coming to Commonwealth of Learning, I was Dean of Innovative Learning at Canada's largest polytechnic institution in Toronto, largely a face-to-face -face institution. And so I was confronted by the challenge that many institutions were facing, and that was how do we quickly become an open and distance learning institution? And I mean quickly, overnight. Um, so the biggest challenge initially was continuity, both for students and for faculty. They were faced with finishing a term of study that began face to face. And they had many questions about things such as assessment, and uh, how they would begin to plan their courses in ways they had not done before. For students, uh, we did a very uh, quick survey uh, and within two days had 8,000 responses from students to understand their needs for continuity as well. And based on those pieces of feedback, we went into a team-based uh, approach uh, across the institution, primarily led by members of my innovative learning team, uh, to begin to build continuity resources, both for faculty and for students, how to have access to the resources they need, counseling, accessibility, technology, infrastructure, software, all of those things needed to be answered very quickly. And I'm putting in the chat a link to uh, some websites we built um, that were very useful to students and faculty and were made as open source so that they were licensed open source as Google sites for other institutions to look at as well and to provide us feedback on how we might improve those websites. Uh, the reason we made them open source was we recognized that others would be facing similar challenges and we hope by modeling our own approach and making it publicly available, others would do similarly and we would learn from them. The next big challenge we faced was realizing that an institution with 90,000 students would need to go fully online in the summer of uh, 2020 and beyond and remain that way possibly for 12 months. 
And so we began to build other resources for faculty, both synchronous and asynchronous. Many faculty wanted one-to-one -one help. Some wanted group interactions with their colleagues. Others simply wanted self-service resources they could use themselves uh, to find ways to move their courses online in ways that would benefit their students. And so we were very interested in finding out how other institutions were also doing this and joined a global research project led by the University of British Columbia, but including institutions globally to understand how every institution responded and to use some of those design principles to think ahead and how we might build for the future. We ended up building a site, which I've also put in the uh, chat, that helped instructors in a self-directed way to build their own open learning courses using a backwards design model. And it is this resource that we're hoping to re uh, engineer at Commonwealth of Learning and make available more globally in the coming year. I'll stop there. Thank you, David. Those are very useful, particularly your experiences and some of those links that you have shared on the chart. Thank you very much. Um, um, taking forward, uh, I have a specific question for uh, uh, Dr. Mahapatra and Dr. Bhavanandan is particularly about uh, how your students uh, reacted to the pandemic and coped with the challenges uh, uh, of this. Professor Bainandan, to start with. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's uh, actually, we have around 70% uh, students from uh, rural areas. Initially, there's a myth in India that rural, uh, I mean, students are not really connected with technology or they are, uh, I mean, internet is not uh, in, proper place. But fortunately, and it was really, I mean, it's eye opener for us. I think uh, more from rural areas, they were well connected in this uh, COVID situation when we conducted many uh, online classes or uh, Zoom classes. And they were very, I mean, active in participating. We never expected that. Uh, we thought that people from uh, urban areas like Mumbai, Pune, Kolapur, Sholapur, they will be more active. But to our surprise, we saw the uh, almost in 70%, 90% of the students from rural areas are very active and very, I mean, uh, I mean, in the sense they were well connected and uh, they participate like anything and they felt that COVID situation has also created where they had a technology, they also came to know the technology, the Zoom and all this. And they were really, I mean, it's a, a, a kind of an educative program for them with this technology. No doubt we are, we are having a, uh, teleconferencing earlier and we had audio video and all that but this has given a lot of opportunity for them so and even their grievances were well addressed in this situation rather than earlier we used to have uh, a phone call or all that now because we are in this uh, covid super we thought that we have to be very very i mean uh, the, the students should be well informed because of this COVID. so that way uh, in, through internet or sms or through various uh, counseling sessions through Zoom. I think these are all addressed and they are very happy in this COVID situation. And they were asking us, sir, will you continue this so that we will be more interactive? So this is what I think uh, was a good uh, opportunity. I think Professor Mahapatra is nodding. Yeah. No, I completely <laughs> agree with Professor Vainandan. Uh, it's a very, very interesting and exciting experience of, uh, I mean, uh, looking at the students and their gradual, uh, I mean, induction into adoption of technology during the period of the COVID. Uh, initially, as I have said, that we were slowly bringing them to the fold of technology, uh, not all of a sudden, but I said gradually and slowly, uh, because they were very happy that the university has got connected to them and they got connected with the university. And slowly they realized that through this medium, all the counseling classes are taking place and some of the best teachers available because when counseling takes place through the face-to-face -face mode, it is a localized counseling. They are interacting with the available local resources, but now the resources are, best resources are pulled together and they are getting exposed to some of the best teachers available. 
and many of the students of Sivanandan has rightly said. They said that will you continue this for a long time, even if there is COVID or no COVID. And we said, of course, it is going to continue. And some of the students said, either we could not enter into the class uh, because there was no space for us uh, because of the limitation of uh, the numbers of people who can really participate. So slowly we went to uh, the other platforms like YouTube Live, where uh, this uh, Zoom was connected and Google Meet was connected, so that large number of students can participate. And we are very sensitive in also. answering to the queries that were raised in the um, youtube live and then slowly what has happened is student wanted that all these video recordings should be uploaded in youtube so any time and every time learning will really become meaningful so it was a lesson for us we started recording all the counseling sessions and we started uploading uh, many a times we could not have few get time to even edit some of the videos but whatever it is we wanted to upload and we could upload many of these counseling sessions in the youtube video so that any student who wants a repeat uh, i mean uh, participation in the counseling or who has not participated because of several reasons could have access to those videos that is one and second thing is since the students were feeling encouraged and getting involved through the technology we wanted to slowly uh, bring them to the fold of technology by asking them to submit their assignments through the online platform by submitting their synopsis to the online platform by submit, submitting their project report through the online platform then we invited them for a project bhavabhati we invited them for a practical counseling session and finally we could succeed in conducting the torment examination of the students in the online platform where for the first time as a distant learner uh, or a practitioner i could see that the attendance in the examination was around 95% for the final year pass out school and 95% attendance in an examination in open and distance learning because i myself had vast experience of conducting examination large examination but here uh, through the use of technology when you have 95% of the student participating in the examination and that to uh, as professor vainandan has said his case is 70% rural student my case is 80% rural student so when 95% of the students are using technology for all these teaching learning activities evaluation assessment mentoring monitoring i think that it is a very very successful uh, i mean uh, effort initiative and uh, really the students have appreciated and adopted slowly to technology during the period of the pandemic oh, from from sir the... can i add some more mr yes, can i add yeah. some more yeah please go ahead Yeah, yeah. What really Mahapatra said, I, it has also impressed me to tell me. We have conducted PhD vivas online. We are yes. conducting our uh, board of management online. We are conducting academic yes. council online. We are conducting planning board online. So all these, I mean, created a kind of. I mean, earlier we used to call them. They has to come to our place. Yes. I mean, all these logistics and all, and it has become so easier and so accessible, and that is one thing. as rightly said by examination online examination is one of the i mean thing which we did it our student final year students were 184000 there were some apprehensions by mumbai pune university for your kind information we have conducted so successfully no where login problem we have mostly travel students as rightly i mean papatra said and we have 51 army jawans at border our artillery center students who were nasik went to border and they have they were so happy 51 i have i mean participated in the online examination and our mla ministers today one minister tweeted our uh, uh, municipal administration minister that i have completed examination of icmou it was online it was very accessible and more easy i am now a graduate from icmou so 184000 of which 80% of the students have written the i mean online exam right rightly said mahapatra in normal times because mahapatra has vast experience as a uh, exam i mean as a minister of evaluation in uh, uh, indira gandhi national open university i think hardly 30 to 40% students turn up because we have that uh, uh, flexibility 3 years 6 years over 2 years 5 years like that but in and many of them thought that i don't know this is a good chance and they appeared and again we had a reexamination for 20% in 20% there were 50% people have attended and there was no problem in uh, 
log in in the I mean writing the exam. And we are so successful in Maharashtra. I think all Mumbai, uh, Pune, Kolhapur, all. I mean, I should not say, but I should tell you the inform as information. They are all their software were crashed, but we have not a single problem. So this all credit goes to our Commonwealth of Learning, Semka, colleagues like Srikant Mahapatra. We are, I mean, no, we are more, I mean, technology. So technology is not new for open universities. And with taking the support forward. of COL. Uh, yeah, uh, Professor yeah. Bainandan, taking forward the, the kind of scenario both of you has mentioned, I will draw upon some of the discussions that pa participants are putting on the chat box. Uh, one of our participants from South Africa, uh, uh, Paul West uh, is has also identified and talked about that this scenario um, uh, pandemic has actually resulted in more learners uh, getting into digital skills. And that's how pro probably happened in the process. And that's what the examples uh, both of you have shared. The challenges probably, as he also mentions about, is that students, uh, even though they have having access to the technologies, um, one of the challenges they are facing is about the cost of data access uh, to uh, uh, the technologies. And um, there is suggestions. Uh, Dr. Botha from uh, um, South Africa again talks about that there is a search in the demand for digital education as to be considered as part of the sustainable development uh, goals. And there is a process of lobbying to, uh, towards that now. Uh, and uh, with that, I would like to take on and ask my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, David, and then um, Dr. Parhar about your reaction about the, the cost and the possibility of including digital education as part of uh, sustainable development goals? Okay. Yes, um, I mean, I think that in 2020, 2021, access to the internet is almost a, a right, uh, a human right uh, that everyone needs to have. And so more cost-effective internet access is clearly something that governments need to take on, whether they uh, come up with policies for educational pricing at a national level to make it affordable for all users to have access to the internet at, at reasonably high bandwidth, or whether they uh, incent um, institutions as part of their budget making process uh, to actually uh, build in uh, some uh, mechanism for providing a better access for students. There has to be uh, an intervention at a governmental level, clearly, uh, if we are going to have incidents uh, or incidences of pandemic and other crises that require us to think more uh, intentionally about open and distance learning as a, a conventional piece of strategy at every higher education institution. It has to be thought about that way, making it part of the SDG I would agree. Dr. Parhat? Yes, um, this is right that what about the cost of, because in certain continents or in certain countries, the <coughs> cost is expensive. Uh, but uh, taking it forward from what my two colleagues, uh, Dr. Vayunandan and Professor uh, uh, Shrikan, they said that students, they were using technology in much faster way. Why? Because they had the internet access on the mobile. That's more important. Even if they don't have a laptop or a desktop computer, the mobile functioned very well and the internet access was there. They were able to uh, access counseling sessions or any other uh, application or the learning material through the set. So what's the funding? Basically what the governments need to do a, maybe increase the funding, uh, the education funding, which they are doing it. If I talk about India, India has a policy. It was not before COVID also, the digital India. So they are making it uh, the students, the other stakeholders, and in other sectors also, the technology as a very important uh, component, and it is increasing. 
Third point which I want to uh, make it and which we have observed in India, at least we have observed, the competition. Suddenly, the, the service providers, they have reduced the cost. And um, uh, companies, they have said they will give free data, mobile data especially. So I think in near future, the laptops or the desktops have already gone. The laptops will also go. The companies, they have reduced the mobile data cost and people, they are affording it unless we, we say a very a certain group with a very low so, socioeconomic uh, background. That is one of the thing. So I think the, the more important is maybe the governments, if they can do a funding so that students, they can go buy or universities can do it, go buy a mobile device, which I think earlier the UK Open University did when they established, they gave a laptop to uh, each and every student, but maybe the students were less, that was the reason. But in India or in the, con in the, in the countries in this region, like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and so on and so forth, they need to think about how we can fund the organizations or the government can fund to buy these devices. Of course, internet is no issue now because the competition. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Parhar. There are a couple of questions, very specific, maybe, uh, maybe to uh, uh, the both the esteemed vice chancellors. You know, um, while the access that you talked about were more uh, for the learners are uh, ranging from 70 to 80%, um, about 80, 95% learners um, uh, appearing in the tests. Uh, did you find uh, any challenge uh, for um, particularly women and girls um, uh, in, in accessing technology or accessing the examination or anything very quickly on this? Because there is a question uh, on this uh, from the audience. See, the, it was a very common challenge, uh, not only for the uh, girl students, but the students in general. Uh, and very rightly, the earlier panelists have talked about uh, data, uh, cost of the data. So we, in fact, uh, did a survey, pre-survey, while conducting sensitive uh, things like uh, examination, assignment submission, and projects. And we found uh, how many of them are comfortable in doing all these things, and is there any kind of uh, resistance or negative feedback from the learner. But we also gave them uh, some kind of incentive by saying that for this online examination, we will not charge any examination fee. Roughly for a course, a student pays around 1.5 1, 1. US dollars or 100 rupees in India uh, to appear the uh, course. So if there are five courses, they pay, uh, say roughly seven to eight US dollars. But in this case, this examination, we said that we are, it is free and you buy your data. Uh, for, uh, on the price that is normally charged uh, for appearing the examination. So it, was an, it is a kind of incentive that was given to the students from our side. Because of the inherent flexibility in the open and distance learning system, we could quickly take a decision and ask the student to use that money for buying the data card. So there was absolutely no complaint, be it the boys or the girls or the uh, rural or the urban. They all participated, and I do, did not see any specific kind of complaint from the girls from rural areas, particularly in appearing the examination or using the internet and particularly the mobile technology uh, in the teaching learning process. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Srikanth is right. We don't, we didn't. Uh, I, I mean, encountered with any like uh, we started with an vendor saying that it should be accessed on mobile. And uh, plus, it should be login should be about thirty thousand students at a time, and there should not be any problem. And before conducting the examination, we had also run a kind of a trial that student can participate and uh, they can, I mean, in sensitize to the examination. So that way, about 30, 000, 40 thousand students, uh, I mean, took that part uh, before the examination. So as rightly said, and. Uh, and selecting a proper vendor and also description of our, about our examination is very important because we went we went for three cloud servers amazon microsoft and google so at a time 30000 students should log in so that there will not be any login problem so we had a morning session and evening session 
in between if there is a rain in between if there is a i mean power shutdown we used to increase i mean increase the hours of the examination so that way we never face neither girls neither boys even differently able and army jawans so no way as rightly said we say we didn't face any problem and their complete support cooperation and fortunately good vendors with a good description so we had i mean we never faced any problem earlier examination we used to have saved some problem but this time online and, and one more important thing is online we have to develop this multiple choice questions that was a big challenge so number of uh, i mean i mean courses in programs that to be what footing we have to do in one month so that was a challenge i think all our uh, staff and our counselors they participated wholeheartedly and saw that this exams the uh, should run successful and it succeeded that is why well. yeah uh, i think uh, i'll turn now uh, the the discussion to uh, a different area uh, for which you all four are are the excellent people to talk about because you are leaders so i think it's important to talk about leadership in this uh, kind of situations and as leaders in open distance education what you personally felt were challenging to manage educational institutions um whether it was collaborating with others um taking up new ideas um say for example access to technologies access to resources uh, using open educational resources um i'm not leading you to the responses but there were issues that have been talked about in the uh, the the chat box on these areas but i would like your reflection um quickly four of you uh, on what were the leadership challenges for you professor mahapatra if i may be permitted yeah if i may be permitted to start i would say that yes there were challenges uh, because the most important challenge was as i said use of technology because being a new university we didn't have appropriate it infrastructure built in my own institution so and our policy is to use open source wherever possible so appropriate technology to reach out to the learners and uh, mostly facilitating our teachers and the staff and the capacity building of the people who are using this technology to reach out to the learners is a big challenge and of course the government whether it is central government or the state government they were very supportive because during this phase of lockdown 1 2 3 4 in india one thing that they have said apart from saying what you cannot do what you cannot do one thing the government has said that you can do online education you can do distance education and that is not only uh, promoted that is also encouraged and similarly the state government also has given the responsibility to the open university Uh, to prepare a guideline for all the universities in the state of orissa uh, for integrating technology integrating self study integrating self learning uh, and uh, motivating the teachers and the students to partially uh, cover the syllabus through uh, the use of books and other forms of technology enabled learning so for that the uh, open university was given a responsibility the open university its document was discussed read by among all the vice chancellors and fortunately for the first time in a state like orissa in india uh, the government has announced officially that 25% of the courses from the current academic session will be covered through self study but the nevertheless 75% of the courses are still face to face and believe me or not the counseling for face to face teaching in the colleges have not yet started because still the lockdown of the universities and colleges are continuing and therefore i would say that this 25% has virtually by default has increased to 75% self study in uh, the state of orissa and government has said that all the digital resources open university has uploaded on the website on its official website should be used by the students and the teachers i think it is a big challenge for us so we have uploaded whatever material was left behind that has also been uploaded more and more videos have been uploaded so that the student community in my own state and outside the state will take up uh, the teaching learning 
without much difficulty so challenges are many but then there are plenty of opportunities as well professor bainanna leadership yeah yeah so almost my and bhapatra uh, <laughs> is matching all <laughs> so yeah. one thing about our is that, that we right from the beginning uh, it was professor ram takwale our finding vice chancellor he was always i mean linked with technology so that way we have online admission even the examination was almost semi online before i mean so that way real challenges were not that much compared to other universities so the other i mean what we understand the atmosphere which covid has created as you said leadership yeah in open university is all teamwork you all know that that teamwork without so that way fortunately when lockdown was uh, declared the as they would be oh, almost university was closed on that no one was allowed still our teachers cooperated and they from the home they used to work now you all know that all software companies are working from home they teachers almost and they used to also take up the Uh, all the grievances of the students and even the almost everything so that way the cooperation from the non teachers teachers and uh, also the our counselors who are not really our no doubt they are counselors at, at their study center they all cooperated so that way the crisis has also created some kind of belongingness to among all this so that kind of i think that made us a leader easier in this sense so they said already and you know you know that outside there was unemployment there were no salaries paid so that way you took care that no one whether it's an our uh, i mean no doubt uh, the uh, permanent employed they they don't have any problem but the head of employees and daily wages we have seen that not they will not, their salaries will not be deducted or their complete salary as usual we used to pay so that all created a, a kind of positiveness as right as said, said srikant there's a lot of opportunities in this so as a leader with the cooperation of all our members i think we that and and because we are already integrated with technology we try to improve upon that how best we can reach how best we can involve our student how best we can resolve our student so that way material everything was ready there is nothing not a problem we have all, everything in the website but one thing we now feel that because now entire students are sensitized with this e, e content and e learning now we have to stop printing of our course material and we immediately convert them so that we can save money and also that way our students also will be benefited this is what dr david yeah i think the key to leadership is uh, leading and doing it quickly and providing models of practice that people can uh easily adapt and use and find value within um i think the big challenge in many institutions is in looking at uh, the problem of teaching learning and assessment in different ways uh using commonly available tools that can be used online and thinking far beyond uh uh high stakes examinations as the final uh judgment on a student's uh level of success we have to get beyond that kind of thinking and think differently i know there are exceptions in areas like engineering and health science where if you get it wrong people actually do die but we actually have to think much more broadly and this is the time to do it there will be no better time than now to boldly go where no institution has gone before dr parha okay uh, so i will be quickly uh, sharing that what the leadership we, what we have given and what uh, issues there are of course let me tell you that col and semca works with partners and collaborators so my experience for the past one and a half years since i have joined semca um, two of them they are sitting the leaders they are sitting here right here and uh, discussing no issues let me uh, say straight away and it is not on the face value Uh, because whatever whenever we said anything they were they accepted it immediately and in one of the best examples is that we have created a mooc kit of to how to train uh, academic counselors with orissa state open universities and they did it i mean it was just a idea floated and majority of the work they did it similar was the case with the yc mou we did the oer policy through online uh, platform zoom we uh, the teachers were trained through uh, through uh, i mean in oer how to find out oer how to frame the policy and so on and so forth so these are the two universities 
I mean, there are other open universities also who very, very readily accepted uh, the, the, um, the, our demand or our supply, whatever you can say, and they did it. So basically the last point which I want to uh, uh, say that the speed of transition with the open universities, they did it is um, more, much more than the formal universities. And why it is because they were working with efficiency uh, and on all the information systems which they have already built into it. So that was it. And um, of course, with the teachers, like we trained 570 teachers in the Maldives, the National Institute of Education, we trained teachers of Pakistan virtual universities. So, I mean, it was uh, basically the collaboration and partnership well done till now. Thank you, Professor Farrar, on highlighting the, uh, the role of collaboration and um, Dr. Avilas Nayak on uh, talks about the importance of collaboration in the chat box, uh, particularly to avoid duplication of uh, course development work or digital asset creation. And uh, many of the institutions are now adopting uh, open educational resources policies and releasing the content as uh, in uh, with Creative Commons licenses as OER, and particularly um, Odisha State Open University uh, and YCOMU uh, have been adopting these principles. Um, and now we are about to close this uh, this uh, uh, session, uh, and I'll um, give you uh, just thirty seconds each to talk about, especially. What do you see or expect that call Commonwealth Educational Media Center Asia or ICDE should be doing more with governments or with educational institutions to mainstream ODL as such? So, Professor Bayanandar? Yeah, uh, Sanjay. See, actually, uh, my, I think I have, uh, Mahab uh, Srikant Mahapatra will also join me in this. First thing is, unfortunately, I don't know, I don't say unfortunately, but we have recent uh, ODL and uh, online uh, regulations in India. And uh, that regulation speaks a lot, 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 but uh, everything is uh, something they said ODL, they keep something away. See, like uh, recently we applied for a skill uh, courses under the national uh, uh, qualification framework. And they said with channel partners, we can start the skill courses. And that is a normal practice. Everywhere. We applied and we got it, but later it was withdrawn saying that we have, we cannot start, we are, we cannot start uh, regular uh, mode courses. I think world war today, I saw Scotland open university. Their, start, their um, ministry is funding a lot of money for skill, reskilling and skilling. So I think CEO can play a main role with the I mean, government saying that open universities are most I think appropriate platform for developing a skill, I mean, offering skill courses with channel partners like industrial training institutions, polytechnic, or what we call engineering colleges, because they have enough, enough infrastructure where it can be utilized. Like we have a BSc agriculture course and our study centers, fortunately in Maharashtra, we have 174 private agricultural colleges. They are our study centers. So equally what regular agriculture university provides them practical classes, same, more than them they provide. But unfortunately, Indian Council of Agriculture and Research said these courses are professionalized. I don't know the word professionalized means no ODL. ODL cannot be, uh, I mean, part of it. So these are the, some of the areas where the, like new education policy, they, they don't find any difference in higher education. They can have any modes. So I think, uh, unfortunately, policy level at government of India is very good, but at putting at the action level, I think the regulators plays a very negative role. And in this juncture, I think uh, the COL can play a, a, a role where they can impress upon the government and uh, their mindset has to be changed. See, word using professional does not, I mean, make overdeal not to uh, offer any courses. So uh, we feel so bad and our... I think Mahapatra and myself both applied for uh, skill courses. We got it. We are so happy and many channel partners approached us. We'll be happy to, but unfortunately this is withdrawn. So, and apart from that, I think uh, CUL has a number of things which has given us support like OER, IT. I mean, I mean, so we expect 
as a commonwealth i think it's a very good uh, umbrella for us to promote the odl and to strengthen odl and to sensitize odl this my my thank my you. reaction thank you professor bainandan we have exceeded the time limit but we'll continue for an another 2 3 minutes for yes, professor mahapatra yeah i i completely agree with professor bainandan uh, that the mindset of the policy makers at the uh, at the central level and of course at the state level that needs to be changed because they are after all they make the policies i'll give you just one or two examples that if you take uh, the new education policy of government of india uh, and you know uh, dr mr sanjay mr that uh, the word oer is not there in the new education policy it is a national document and it is going to determine the uh, path of education school education and higher education for the next 20 years in a country like india but when we talk about promoting oer unesco talks about oer policy and oer and international collaboration institutional collaboration for oer uh, the word oer is not figuring so therefore uh, both icd and uh, uh, semca and uh, of course uh, commonwealth of planning uh, which is an intergovernmental organization should take up with the government of india Uh, to include this concept of open education resources uh, and professor vainandan has right, very rightly said skill education now look at the new education policy it says that in next 5 years or 10 years there is going to be 50% skill education um, in the country now they say that uh, maybe uh, open universities or odl can be explored while vocational education is to be, you cannot say it will be explored it has to become a part of the skill education in the country and similarly uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, 40% of the courses are to be offered through oer but rest 60% of the self instructional material in india are to be developed in house by the universities so why there is so much of repetition and what is so sacrosanct about 60% of the material to be developed by the universities and when on the one hand we say that rest 40% is to be through any kind of mou or collaboration or through open education resources why this kind of 60% 40% when we are talking about quality oer at affordable cost not only for the universities and institution but for the students i think that it is time for both icd and uh, you know, commonwealth of planning to promote oer in india in a very large scale of course their partners uh, semca has to play a positive role and semca is playing a quite a positive role in promoting oer in india dr porter i think uh, there are two things the commonwealth of learning brings to the table one is advocacy and policy support and development and the other is models of practice frameworks uh resources Uh, publications and ways of working that help institutions okay. to move forward on all of the issues that we're talking okay. about quality oer employability okay. inclusion okay. access okay. gender equity we have many of those resources and they're available for everyone to use and we're fully supportive of helping people to implement them completely thank you dr david uh, professor parhar okay to i will be what that uh, david yeah, said i will be very quick and the last thing uh, semca is working with this uh, sector skill councils a lot and uh, let me tell you that we have already started talking with uh, dr shikant mohapatra about the skill courses so what we are working with the sector skill councils i think if the same courses or this the open universities and that's open for professor vayunandan also If the open universities can develop small modules on skills i think the ugc i can openly say deb nothing no one is going to say no regulator is going to come into the picture so we need to the open universities and semca we need to work together and just launch those skill courses at the way we need to see that the knowledge of the skill can be imparted through uh, oer or learning material through mobile or only the skill component has to be done to through the face to face so that can be only a 20% 30% but we are working with the sector skill councils on the contrary we are working uh, for mhrd mhrd is uh, is they are looking for or they have already have for the school education like 
paper mesh sheet they have said. So we are working with the handicraft sector skill council, just an example. Handicraft sector skill council so that the school, school students, they opt for the skill courses. Similarly, if we can work with the open universities and we will definitely do it, we will be making a plan uh, in the next six months or so, or, or maybe the 20, 2021. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Farrar. I think we have rightly exceeded over five minutes for, for this session, but it is really worthwhile to talk to the esteemed uh, uh, panelists. Thank you all four of you for this excellent point and uh, um, contribution to this session. I, Sanjay Mishra, on behalf of the Commonwealth of Learning and International Council for Open and Distance Education would like to thank all of you. Uh, for your contribution to this uh, session and the kind of work that you all are doing to spread education for all, uh, especially higher education in this context. Uh, we had had a good number of people from around the Commonwealth uh, and elsewhere. Uh, I could see colleagues from Botswana, South Africa, Sweden, and I'm, uh, and of course, India, um, and I might have missed a couple of them from other countries as well. I'm really happy and thank you all for joining in and asking questions and comments on the chat box, which I tried my best to accommodate uh, asking the panelists as well as referring to the comments and questions. And um, I thank you all, stay safe, stay well, and bye-bye for this moment. And we are going to close this session right now. Thank you very much.